Secretary. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. It is a pleasure to rise to uh, have the opportunity to speak on the uh, third MPI motion or debate raised by the Labor Party in the last three or four weeks. We had the member for Blacksland putting up the importance of planning for the jobs of the future. We had the Leader of the Opposition putting up the government's failure to plan for the jobs of the new economy. And now, we, well, now we've had the Shadow Minister talking about the government's failure to prepare Australians for the jobs of the new economy. Well, it seems that uh, in, in the future, in the new economy, according to Labor, there will be extensive use of the copy-paste key, Madam Speaker. It seems that we're coming back to the same topic time after time. Now, Labor seems to think it's discovered the new economy. Labor seems to think it's discovered the digital economy. It seems to think it's onto some massive new insight that our economy is transforming at an extraordinary rate. Of course, our economy is transforming. According to Deloitte, uh, a paper released recently, over 5 per cent of Australia's GDP, some $79 billion, can be attributed to the digital economy, and they estimate that the digital economy has increased in size some 50 per cent since just 2011. And we're seeing a transformation in every sector. Of course, it's important that we have uh, technology-based companies, particularly in the start-up sector, doing the best that they can. According to the OECD Science, Technology and Innovation Scorecard, some one-third of job creation in the business sector comes from young firms with fewer than 50 employees, even though they make up only 11 per cent of total employment. So the key issue is how do we develop and implement a plan across all of the end-to-end -end elements? Education, supporting the start-up businesses that are so important and, most importantly, stimulating and supporting the private sector but recognising that private sector jobs are created by the private sector, not by government. And of course, it seems that Labor still clings to the fiction that government can solve everything with just more government spending. So let's look first at education. And I want to certainly welcome Labor. They're a bit late to the party on education, but it is very important that we have a set of education policies designed to recognise and respond to the transformation of our economy. On this side of the House, we have a set of policies with a very clear focus on STEM science, technology, engineering and mathematics subjects, which are so important. Indeed, the Minister for Education highlighted some of the initiatives that we're pursuing uh, in, in an answer to the a question just today, the way that we're working to change the requirements for the training of primary school teachers so that they must have a specialty in languages, in science or in maths the way that we are reforming the Australian curriculum to declutter it, it to give more capacity to engage in depth on core areas such as science, maths, English and other foundational subjects. And he, talked to, he mentioned that uh, Stephen Schwartz, the former vice-chancellor of Macquarie University, has now been made the chairman of the Australian Curriculum and Reporting Authority. Uh, we heard the shadow minister talking about the way that technical education needs to be responsive to the new economy. And of course that is right. Of course that is right. That is precisely why we have announced a pilot P-Tech school, uh, which is designed to offer a pathway into careers in technology uh, as a form of vocational education. And that is a major uh, commitment that has been made by the Abbott government. The, minister talked about, the education minister talked about our commitment to summer schools for STEM students so that students with a capacity and interest in science, technology, engineering and mathematics can be brought together and encouraged to deepen their skills and pursue this vital inquiry. The minister mentioned that we have allocated significant funding to coding, that's to say programming, learning children, uh, school children learning programming skills, which are a critical part of any modern economy. So look, while we welcome Labor's interest in this important area, this government has a plan. We are focused on preparing people for the new economy, and there's a lot of work going on in the education portfolio. Let's talk about startups, which are an absolutely critical part of a modern digital economy. There is an inexorable linkage between startup companies and the, uh, the digital economy. Look at Google, the world's third largest company by market capitalisation, which is 
been going only 17 years, and there are many stories of start-ups achieving remarkable success within a short time. The Australian company Atlassian, founded by two men, Scott Farquhar and Mike Cannon Brooks, who are both now only about 35. They met at the University of New South Wales. Together they have founded a company with a market value of well over $3 billion, which employs some 1,000 people in Australia and around the world, high-paid, high high-skilled jobs. Now, startups are key, and an important part of encouraging startups is having a tax framework which allows them to remunerate talented employees and attract them through employee share ownership plans, which are a standard form of remuneration used in the tech sector around the world. Yet Labor, in 2009, changed the tax law to make it fundamentally unattractive to offer or to receive options under an employee share option plan because they shifted the taxing point so the moment you were issued the options, you attracted a tax liability, even though the options might prove to be worthless. Because Labor doesn't understand the nature of risk, it doesn't understand the idea that people might be prepared to take a risk, and if things come good, if the company goes well, then the individual employee will share in that prosperity and in that growth. Wayne, uh, the, the, the member for Lilly, uh, unfortunately, completely uh, destroyed the attractiveness of employee share ownership plans as a tool to encourage and support start-ups. We are fixing that with legislation uh, that has been uh, taken through by the uh, very energetic Minister for Small Business, and that is one of the many areas in which we are working to get policies in place which support private sector businesses and particularly start-up businesses. Because I want to come to the third and most fundamental point, which our friends on the other side of the House in their DNA do not grasp. In the tech sector, in the modern technical digital economy, as in other parts of the economy, it is the private sector that needs to generate the prosperity, the growth, the opportunity and the jobs. Labor's approach as a default is that government can and will do everything, and when you look at their approach to the technology sector, what they have sought to do, putting $10 billion into the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, $43 billion of public money into the National Broadband Network, their instinct is to have massive publicly funded behemoths that are designed to drive out the private sector, not to stimulate it. Our approach is very different. What we want to do is encourage the private sector in advanced manufacturing, in technology and in so many other areas. And that's the key focus of many of the policies that we are pursuing. The Industry Growth Centres policy, $225 million, uh, supporting key sectors like food and agri agribusiness, mining equipment, technology and services, medical technologies and pharmaceuticals, advanced manufacturing, oil, gas and energy resources, which is driving action across those sectors on industry uh, uh, collaboration with researchers, uh, on commercialisation and on market access and global supply chains. There is a tremendous change towards global supply chains. McKinsey and the Business Council of Australia put out some terrific work on this last year. They pointed out, for example, that one of Australia's largest manufacturing exporters is Boeing, exporting components made in Australia, which then go to the US to become assembled into a completed aircraft. That is the future of modern manufacturing. That's something that our friends on the other side of the house seem to completely fail to understand. And in all of their rhetoric about the automotive industry, for example, they don't seem to be aware of modern trends in advanced manufacturing. This government has a whole series of policies. The Entrepreneurs Infrastructure Program, $100 million, uh, supporting key issues like assisting businesses to get access to researchers to help re-engineer the operations of those businesses to develop new ideas with commercial potential. Just recently, 18 grants were issued to accelerate commercialisation or the Manufacturing Transition Program—19 projects. So, uh, Madam Speaker, Australia has some great tech sector businesses businesses emblematic of the modern economy. Cochlear, Atlassian, ResMed, Campaign Monitor, two, uh, or a, a young Australian company which recently raised $250 million from a US venture capital fund. Uh, Seek.com, REA, the real estate, uh, online real estate portal. We need to support private sector businesses 
to create the jobs in the modern digital economy. We need to back that up in, with education and other elements of the end-to-end -end system. The Abbott government has a plan to do this. We are executing on that plan. Uh, and the future is coming. We are working to make sure our workforce and our economy is ready for it.